Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and that endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of God. Thanks be Will you pray with me? Faithful God of mystery, hold us in your embrace this morning. By your holy word proclaimed, teach us that we are not to shy away from the troubles, the pressures, the challenges that you place before us, but rather we are to embrace them even as you embraced the cross in obedience, and we are to embrace them with courage, born of a confidence in your presence in our lives. And may these words be your words, not my opinions. And may the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. This message this morning is about hope. Hope in the midst of chaos. Hope in the midst of disappointment. Hope in the face of sorrow. Or defeat. Now I could go on with a litany that could give voice to the various circumstances in which we find ourselves in the weeds. In the weeds, now I've referenced that before. It's sometimes a place, it's sometimes a feeling. You discover yourself in a place that you desperately wish you weren't. But then something happens something that happens very little to do with you or with me, and we're pointed to passages, passages like ours today, a passage rooted deep in the soil of biblical faith. Our passage this morning today is a perennial. It's called forth to address concerns that are voiced in a, the different seasons of our lives. These verses look at hardship and hold it up holds it up to the light, and we are given the chance to see it in a new way. To see it in a new way, through a new pair of glasses. To see it as it is. To see it as it is, and we are reminded that there is purpose in the narrative stories of our lives, just as there was purpose in the narrative of Christ's obedience in Jesus. There's purpose to the walk that we are sometimes called to take that we didn't expect, that we would never choose. A walk that is hard. But hear this today. Even though this walk and this narrative and this direction and this journey is hard, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And in fact, it's something that we may even boast about. That's what scripture says. Do you believe it? Well, now most of us are familiar with the writings of the Apostle Paul. And here he writes to a congregation that he didn't uh, establish. And he pens this lyrical passage that rivals any passage in scripture. And Paul says this. Paul says that we have been justified. That means Paul says that we have been set into right relationship with God through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. 
And because of this, we're at peace. We're at peace with God, and in addition to having peace, we may have confidence in hope for the future. The populist commentator William Barclay puts it this way. He says that Paul uses a Greek word with which it's understood to reflect two different things, two wonderful images. First, it's a regular word for ushering someone into the presence of royalty. And also, it describes the approach of the worshiper to God. But it has another image, that of the place where ships port, a harbor, a haven, a place for refuge. So through Jesus, we are ushered into, we are introduced to the realm of the divine, and we find grace. But we are also granted refuge from the tempest and the storms through which the peace of God will carry us. Not through any merit of our own, not through any machinations of our own, but through the grace of God. Now Paul remembers the climate for Christians in the city that he plans to visit, Rome. Paul remembers that that climate for Christians in Rome is hard. So he suggests that adversity, that sufferings, that trouble produces fortitude endurance, metal, grit. And here again, he chooses words that in the Greek imply much more than we've been conditioned to expect. You see, the word for adversity is best translated as pressure. The Christians in Rome experienced pressure as an isolated group. They knew fear, they knew want, they knew persecution. But Paul states that pressure and trouble and adversity, these things produce fortitude. Now that word that Paul uses means more than endurance. It's a word that means more than just adversity and staying, staying where you are. The word that he uses is hupomone. It's a strange word, isn't it? Hupomone. It means the spirit that faces life head on. The spirit that doesn't cave to pressure, that doesn't sit on the pity pot. But there's more. <laughs> there's more. Fortitude, endurance, stalwartly facing the reality of our lives produces character. The word Paul uses here describes metal it's, uh, that's been refined, passed through the fire, so that every impurity has been pur purged. We would think about silver being purged and refined so that it's sterling, sterling silver. So when pressure and affliction and adversity and trouble is met with endurance, and fortitude, out of the battle, out of the conflict, because of the struggle, one emerges stronger. One emerges stronger and purer and better and nearer to God. Then Paul continues, character produces hope. Character produces hope. Our present status in God's grace is such that we can even maintain confidence in the face of adverse reality. That's right, God's grace is so powerful that even things that work against such confidence and hope only serve to strengthen it. So those who know God's grace also know that such adversity brings out patience. And that such patience shows that we can meet the test of adversity and meeting the test of adversity merely reinforces our hope. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how these words stirred the hearts of community in Rome, just as they have stirred the hearts of believers for over 2,000 years? And I pray that they stir our hearts this morning. Such hope is able to meet the test of adversity because it's grounded in that which is rock solid. It's grounded in that which is unchangeable and inexhaustible. It's grounded in God's love. It's grounded in God's love with which he has filled our lives, a love that comes to us through God's Holy Spirit. And here's the kicker, that while we were still sinners, that while we were still sinners, at the right time, Christ died for us, and at this time, in these times, and for all times, Christ resides in us through God's Holy Spirit. Now you may be saying, well, hot dog. <laughs> well, hallelujah, let's go to the beach. But wait a minute. With the incivility, with the vulgarity, with the uncertainty that fills the headlines, here's a question. 
Is now the right time for hope? Your child is in trouble. Do you have hope? Your job is eliminated. Can you have hope? The diagnosis is worse than you could have imagined. Should you have hope? The patterns of behavior that have kept you down for years won't go away. Why do you have hope? Well, Paul points us this day through the living word of God to the realities that we must face. That that which doesn't kill us only makes us stronger and that which may kill us, if born with strength and with integrity and faced shoulder to shoulder with each other in the grip of our God, even death is not to be feared. Folks, our mission is to be God's agents of righteousness, God's agents of love for the dignity of all people, all of God's created, whom God loves the same. So now is the right time for hope, for there is no time that God is not faithful. Now is the right time for hope because there is no time that we are beyond, beyond God's love and beyond God's reach. So now is the right time for hope because in God's love, empowered by the Spirit, emboldened in God's strength, we may boast. We may boast in whatever may come because, and you heard it, because death, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation. Hear this nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So when is the right time for hope? Now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.